Hey everyone, welcome back to Lab for Crypto. Today we are diving deep into the world of market analysis with a focus on two powerful metrics, the MVRV and MVRV Zisco. If you are keen on understanding market dynamics and making informed decisions, aiming to improve your portfolio performance, you are in the right place. So what exactly are MVRV and MVRV Zisco? and how they can help us navigate the crypto market. First up, we have MVRV or market value to realize value. It's a ratio that compares the current market cap of a cryptocurrency to its realized cap, which values each coin based on the price it was last moved. But why does that matter? Imagine the realized cap considers factors like lost and dormant coins giving us a better perspective. For example, if you bought one Bitcoin in 2015 and it hasn't moved since, the realized cap reflects the price at the last transaction, not the current market value. Taking the concept of MVRV a bit further, we can create the MVRV Z-score. The Z-score is equal to the market cap minus the realized cap divided by the standard deviation of the market cap. The standard deviation identifies the outliers in the data, capturing the extremes between the market value and the realized value, while also considering diminishing returns. In more technical terms, the Z-score quantifies the number of standard deviations by which the market value deviates from the realized value at any given moment. This score serves as a crucial tool to evaluate whether the market is currently overvalued or undervalued. I have prepared some slides that will help us get a better understanding of these two metrics. And let's have a look. Let us see an example. Today, Alice paid one Bitcoin to Bob. The price of Bitcoin at the time of the transfer was 30,000 USA dollars. Imagine for simplicity that the total supply of Bitcoin is one. Therefore, if we want to calculate the market cap of Bitcoin, we multiply the circulating supply of Bitcoin, which in this example is only one, by its price, which is equal to 30,000 USA dollars. As a result, the Bitcoin's market cap is equal to 30,000 USA dollars. The next day, the Bitcoin price increased and it's now worth 35,000 USA dollars. But Bob still holds the Bitcoin that he received from Alice and there was no transaction made in the Bitcoin blockchain. So the realized cap of Bitcoin is still 30,000 USA dollars as no Bitcoin moved but the market cap of Bitcoin is 35,000 USA dollars now as the market price of Bitcoin has increased. We separate the realized cap from the market cap because Alice sent the Bitcoin to Bob because she assumed at the time that one Bitcoin was worth 30K. But Bob also accepted the one Bitcoin because he also thought the same thing. However, now that Bitcoin price has increased, and if it continues to increase, Bob may be tempted to sell. On the other hand, if the Bitcoin price keeps dropping lower than the 30k, Bob possibly will not feel the urge to sell as he is now at a loss, and as a result, the selling pressure of Bitcoin is reduced. The MVRV is just the ratio between the market cap and the realized cap. And it helps us gouge the selling pressure for Bitcoin in this example. By observing the Bitcoin data, we can see that when the MVRV is less than one, it is a great time to accumulate. And on the other hand, when it is above 3.6, it signals the market top. Let's see the graph of MVRV so we can better visualize what I just said. When MVRV is below 1, historically signaled the Bitcoin bottom. And I have put a circle into these areas 
so you can better visualize them. When MVRV was above 3.6, it signaled the Bitcoin top, which are the points above the blue line. You can explore MVRV's historical performance on the platform, but let's see an example together. On November 2022, the MVRV score of Bitcoin was 0.798, and the Bitcoin price was around 16K. The current price of Bitcoin is 43K, so the MVRV score did a good job signaling the Bitcoin bottom. Moving next to the MVRV Z-score, which is an extension of the MVRV that we saw before, we can identify the bottom and top with a statistical lens. The Z-score is a statistical measure that quantifies how far a particular data point is from the mean of a group of data points, measured in terms of standard deviation. The MVRV Z-score is equal to the market cap of a coin minus its realized cap and then divided by the standard deviation of the market cap. Note that if you do not know how standard deviation is calculated, I will add a link in the description below of a previous video I made in which I explain in detail how the standard deviation is calculated. For Bitcoin, accumulating when the Z-score was below zero signified an excellent accumulation zone, whereas when the Z-score was above six, it marked the market top. Let us see the graph so we can again better visualize the difference. When the MVRV Z-score was below zero, it was evident that it was a good accumulation region. And when it was above six, above the blue line, that it was a good time to exit your position. With the exception of Bitcoin's double top in November 2021, that the MVRV Z-score failed. Taking this opportunity, I want to stress the importance of combining multiple models to make informed decisions. As our unique risk metric signaled both Bitcoin tops in November 2021. The risk metric reached values of 99 and 79% in the first and second peak of Bitcoin's top regions. And I will have a link in the description below with a detailed explanation of the risk metric if you want to have a look. Let's go back to the platform to showcase the MVRV and MVRV Z-score. From the menu on the left, you will be able to click on the MVRV and the MVRV Z-score, and you will be able to monitor both values for various coins and find periods of overvaluation and periods of undervaluation. We have only the line for undervaluation as the overvaluation section depends on the coin that you are basically checking. Then, as always, you will find the section with the video explanation, the detailed description, and the how to use section. Lastly, you will find a table with all the data shown in the graph, as you may want to use this method to explore the data. Do not forget to like the video if you found it helpful and leave us a comment with your thoughts. Until next time, bye-bye.